are looking for a mobile wallet to hold and access your crypto assets, you need to go to Argent.xyz and download the Argent Smart Contract Wallet onto your Android or iOS device. Argent is one of the most secure ways to hold your crypto assets on your mobile device while still being able to access all the DeFi products and services that we know and love. Argent has enabled one tap access to all the DeFi applications that we all use the most and recently onboarded into the Argent app is the YEARN vaults. You can now access yield from a specific vault from YEARN and then YEARN handles the rest. Also new to Argent is Balancer and being able to supply liquidity to Balancer pools and also receive BAL rewards for doing so all from your Argent wallet. One of Argent's newest features is the ability to route trades and swaps through the various liquidity pools in the ecosystem, ensuring that you always receive the best rates when you trade inside of Argent. Argent has done a ton of effort into making sure that your assets are as safe as possible. They have social recovery options with their Guardians feature, making sure that any trusted friend or family member can restore your access back to your Argent wallet if you were to ever lose or break your phone. And there's also some simple account features such as sending limits and whitelisted accounts, making sure that your money doesn't ever do anything that you don't explicitly approve. In order to see the Argent wallet in action, go to argent.link slash bankless and download the app. We're also brought to you by Monolith. Monolith is your cool new DeFi account, your DeFi savings account, your DeFi checking account. Except the cool thing about the Monolith DeFi account is that it gets software updates, right? You actually get to increase the usefulness of this over time. So here are some of the features. Monolith is a smart contract wallet with a lot of the features that you would expect if you've come to know DeFi and what it is, you can you can add money to it. You can put that money to work uh, in Compound and, and accessing yield. Uh, but you can all, and you can also swap through Uniswap. What was cool with Monolith is that they will send you a very sexy Monolith Visa card that connects to your smart Monolith smart contract wallet on Ethereum. So it's a really awesome tool to live a bankless life with a, a, a savings account that gets software updates. So this is, this is something that you're never gonna find out in the real world, but you can still do real world things with you know real money in, like buy your groceries. So that's just fantastic. Coming soon to Monolith, actually already here to Monolith, is now you can buy DAI and get it sent to your wallet directly, right? So it's also being an on-ramp. So you don't have to go through your centralized exchange like Coinbase or Gemini or wherever. You can just go straight from your bank account right into your Monolith checking account smart contract wallet. So check them out at monolith.xyz. All right, Bankless Nation, I am here with Kevin Chu from Rally. Kevin, welcome to the nation. Thanks for having me. All right, so let's start with Rally. Uh, what is it? Rally is a social token project. And what that means is that we work with a kind of broadly defined creators. So this could be musicians, it could be Twitch uh, streamers and eSport athletes, it could be writers, uh, it could be newslet newsletter uh, communities, it could be a, a Discord community. We're working with all types of creators who want to uh, start their own digital business and uh, use a token to uh, create commerce and reward their loyal fans and, uh, and participate in this new crypto economy. Yeah, so it seems to be that the world of content creation inevitably creates community, right? And we've seen this all the way back to just like, you know, people in bands, right? People with who play music, they have fans that go to their shows. Now in the crypto world, we have like newsletters like Bankless, where we have our Discord channels, like Anthony Cezano has this as well. Seems to be like any type there's any anytime there's somebody who's producing some sort of content, some sort of media, there is also this like paired community that goes along with these these things. And then there's also like it's uh, Twitch streamers, I think is like in gaming streaming, it's just a massive world where there's just uh, communities and fans around content. So in a world where there's always this paired community, how does Rally bolster that? Well, that, that's exactly where Rally fits in. So, you know, fiat payments make sense if you're if it's just a one way sort of model, right? So like television or broadcast, great. I give you a service or product and you pay me for it, right? And that's uh, great, you got US dollars or any other uh, fiat currencies and it's great for, for those types of uh, transactions um, if you all live in the same country and use the same currency. Where crypto makes a ton of sense is when you have people from all sorts of different countries using all sorts of different currencies uh, and you also have two-way interactions, right? So let's say you've got a, a, you know, let's take the inner circle community for, for Bankless. And you've got 
uh, active community members who are moderating uh, Discord, preventing spam, preventing bad behavior. They're contributing, you know, content ideas or article ideas, um, you know, to the to the editors and other uh, content creators in the Bankless Nation. You know, those types of uh, those types of participants, while they're not creating the overall, you know, sort of umbrella of content, they're actively participating and contributing to that community. And if you can reward them with a with a social token for their for their contributions, that is a unique form of action that can happen uh, using this new, uh, you, you know, using crypto. And so instead of you know you David taking ten dollars out of your pocket and sending it through PayPal to you know to a moderator, which you know it's like a one time transaction the other way. Now it's like, hey, we're all going to participate and all own a piece of this new social token economy. And yes, some of the fans are going to use that to pay for content or pay for a service that uh, that person consumes. But other people may contribute every once in a while and earn some tokens. And then others will will uh, potentially just be a capital provider, you know, into the system, right? And so it enables a global community of participants in two-way interactions that happen in communities to all come together and all be aligned towards growing a new economy together. So we, we speak often on the Bankless program about the inherent coordinating tools that Ethereum provides the world, right? And a token especially, uh, the token almost is the coordinating tool, right? Like it's the Aave protocol, the Uniswap governance. Governance happens via the token, right? And it's also the thing that people like obsess over, right? Like at least the monetary ones with, with the price, like people, people just focus on tokens. And it seems to be that what you guys are doing is you guys are integrating the focusing power of a token and you're putting it into the hands of content producers who are who inherently already have this fan base. But it seems to me like it's, it's uh, finding ways to tinker with incentives, but specifically the incentives of fans, right? To allow and allow the expression and the uh, contributions of the community to actually be uh, unlocked or enabled. Am I, am I on the right page here? Yeah, that, that, that's exactly correct. I think we're, you know, I, I, I want to, you know, lie and, and, and say there's an absolute, you know, blueprint for exactly how this is going to work for the next hundred years. I think what's really exciting about the space right now is there's a lot of experimentation. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of communities um, where there's different levels of participation. There's, you know, these lurkers, there's the once in a while contributors, there's the active moderators and so forth. And then there's the founders or active employees of the community. Um, and, and tokens kind of bind everyone together and allow kind of commerce to happen in a unique way uh, in these digital communities. Uh, and oftentimes these digital communities have people from, you know, dozens of countries that are participating in them. Mm -hmm. And crypto becomes an easy way to um, create a way to bind that community together without worrying about some of these traditional financial rails that are dependent on, uh, you know, banks and others to, uh, to facilitate. Yeah, and, and definitely in a world where online communities seem to be, um, really needed these days. Uh, we, we ran a piece on the Bankless newsletter called Squad Wealth, and it was how, how like the groups form, like via the DM chat, like the group chat, like the Discord server, the Telegram room, like uh, groups and just squads, as they called them, appeared because of like, you know, just shared, with, and for any reason why any group of friends would show up in the real, in the outside world, but this happened, now it's happening here. And, and uh, I, I'm really interested in just people for, forming based on shared interests, right? Shared goals. And that, and, and it looks like Rally's going after the shared interests of like content producers. Um, let's go through the lifespan of, of uh, the user story, right? And maybe let's start with a content producer. Why would a content producer come to the Rally platform and mint a token? And what would they then, what would be the initial like reasons why that token would be useful to the content produ producer? Right. So let's take, a, let's take a content producer like, um, Fan Hots. So he was a former professional esport player and uh, played for a Blizzard game called Heroes of the Storm. And uh, world class, he's he's the most followed uh, person, most viewed, most followed person on Twitch for um, for, for the game today. And um, so the the way that he thinks about it is that he says, well, you know, his fans are always requesting him to to do different things. In the past, he's taken PayPal payments and. He, he does uh, subs and donos, what are called donations, you know, on his channel. And, uh, and that's all been fine, but he's got, you know, fans from 60 different countries that, that actively watch and, and uh, uh, you know, uh, participate on his channel. 
and he's got a very active Discord. Uh, he's got moderators and other people that contribute a lot of time and effort to help his community. And so he uses crypto in a couple of ways. One is you can use crypto to uh, pay for certain types of digital interactions with him. So he, uh, so he's in gaming. There's obviously a little bit of um, uh, a lot of fun and entertainment that happens. So people love picking champions that they know he's really, really bad at, or just are bad at the meta, you know, in the game currently. And so you can pay him tokens to play those champions, and he'll do it. And it's kind of a funny, you know, thing that the whole community kind of laughs at. Um, and so that's just traditional commerce. So that's just taking things that he used to do in PayPal, uh, but now he's able to do in crypto. And he takes, you know, you can convert BTC, you can convert ETH, you can convert USDC, et cetera, uh, into fan coins, and, uh, and then you can pay it. He earns enough money where he doesn't need a cash out right away. So one of his benefits is he can say, well, gosh, we're getting close to the end of 2020. I don't need that, that cash today. I'm gonna keep it in my cryptocurrency. Maybe in 2021 or 2022, I'll convert it back into U.S. dollars to pay the bills and pay taxes. You know, at that point in time, so there's, there's, he's able to, to use this um, currency for traditional commerce uh, and time shift. You know, taxes and other things. And probably the most important thing is that we have what we call community activity rewards at Rally. So our creators are the equivalent of a Bitcoin miner or a, a Ethereum validator. They're the ones that are providing the work uh, in our network. And so when we do rally emissions um, on, a, on a weekly schedule right now, the creators that contribute economic activity into the rally network, they earn proportionate to their contributions rally rewards, right? And those rally rewards don't just go to the creator, it goes to the entire community of people who hold, for example, fan coins. And so, you know, he's, he's transferring his commerce from PayPal, he's paying less fees to, uh, to process international transactions and so forth. And he's earning, you know, crypto rewards on top of it. So right now, uh, for Rally, if uh, you're if you're moving about a thousand dollars of commerce onto the Rally platform today, you're earning about twenty five hundred dollars, you know, for that commerce. So not only are you, you know, I, I was listening to your RAC, you know, the RAC, um, you know, bankless uh, topic, and he's talking about how artists get twelve percent of a transaction. Well. You know, imagine getting 250% of a transaction. I mean, that's, that's uh, or 150% of a transaction. That's what's possible today with, with in the relatively early stages of, of social tokens. And I'll, tell you, I'll have another example of, of a content creator called Mizzy. And Mizzy is a body artist. And so she, she paints body art and uh, she's just absolutely creative and, and fantastic at what she does. And she has a special channel on Discord where she has certain types of body art that she'll share only on her Discord channel. And you need X number of Mizzy tokens to gain access to those channels. And uh, you know, it's a way that she can screen and say, hey, here, here are my true fans. And I'm going to share you know, some, uh, some pieces of content you know, with you guys that I'm not doing on stream. And uh, it's a great way for her to create kind of unique access with fans that are long-term holders of her you know, currency. So she's using it both for transactions. You could pay her and say, hey, I want you to paint you know, Diva from Overwatch, you know, next. Um, great, you can do that from commerce, or you can, if you're just, just gonna hold and, and maintain a balance of, of her tokens, you get access to certain, you know, token permission channels, right? And so there's a number of different experiments that are going on and creators that are using this to, uh, you know, engage their fan bases, offer kind of different slices of, of her fan base, um, you know, access, and of course, you know, better monetize and, and create a better business online. Uh, with our fans that are spread all throughout the world. Okay, so it seems to be that Rally is leveraging uh, payment technology, which obviously crypto does very well, uh, just to sidestep you know traditional payment rails. It seems like it's leveraging uh, a platform that's Patreon esque, where there's permissioned entry based on the the status of the a, of a of a content consumer, right? Uh, and that status is probably defined by the token, which is also a new crypto and economic primitive. And the token is doing something that the content creator or whoever mints the token uh, determines, right? Like, and so like, I'm assuming right. the, the creator unlocks access to some of their content based on the state of tokens or the, what those tokens are, like the, the relationship between the token and the holder, uh, which, but that kind of draws my attention to like, all right, well, there seems to be a lot of infrastructure that needs to be built in order to 
express that like Patreon like behavior. Like if we're using a Discord channel, if we're using a Twitch stream, uh, like there needs to be integrations, right? Like Discord needs to be able to look at your like your Ethereum wallet or your Rally wallet and see where their tokens are. And that's just not that's just Discord, right? Like what about Twitch? Like it seems to be there needs to be a bunch of, of technological infrastructure to be built out. Where is all that technology right. going to come from? Well, we, we build out the Rally protocol level, right? And so this is where so we have a number of uh, technology that we that we think about Rally as not just a simple ERC-20. We think about it as a whole layer of technology that makes it really simple to do a number of things. So first of all, Rally is really targeted towards the next 100 million people in crypto, right? If you know how to use your MetaMask and you know how to get ETH into you know, your non-custodial wallet, you know, great. Like if your audience is 100% that, you know, Rally may not be you know, the very best for you. But if you have a bunch of new, new users into crypto, maybe they're, they've, they've done a, a couple of transactions, but they're still sort of unfamiliar with the, the broader crypto landscape. You know, Rally, you know, Rally is meant for first time users and crypto unfamiliar people to get into crypto for the first time and not have it be this very high barrier sort of experience, right? And so from the time that you see a creator saying, hey, you need one of my tokens to participate in this event that I'm hosting. You need one of my tokens to, you know, participate in this commerce um, or get access to this uh, uh, piece of content that I'm, I'm creating for you. Uh, then from that time that you see that, it's the time that you can create an account, get provisioned your first crypto wallet, uh, swipe a credit card and make that transaction. 60 seconds or less is kind of what we designed for our rally. So we kind of vert vertically integrate a number of different um, you know, technology to make it easy for first time crypto users to get in and participate with the creator in, um, you know, in their business. The second thing that we do is that we create a very sophisticated layer of what we call automated market making by using a primitive uh, called token bonding curves. So this is similar to a Nexus Mutual. We don't bond to ETH, but we bond to the rally governance token. And so every creator that comes on board and they mint their own token, First of all, it's a no code way of, of doing it. So you can get started within a few minutes. Uh, you mint your token, that token is bonded to Rally. Uh, and what that does, and, and that token has its own supply and demand, you know, sort of dynamics that, that govern the, the pricing and market uh, behavior of that token. But a very important thing is that you don't need to go set up a Uniswap uh, pool and get LPs to contribute to that pool to allow for exchange of those tokens. You don't need people to peer to peer trade them at the same time. You can trade with the smart contract that has what's called a token bonding curve. So there's always liquidity for a token. Even if you only have five fans that are you know, participating in your crypto economy, those five fans can easily transact with each other with 100% liquidity, 24 hours a day. No need to set up a Uniswap you know, pool uh, to do that. The Rally token provides liquidity and the Rally network basically takes on you know, all of the liquidity uh, challenges and taking on the ability for creators to cash out or fans to, to cash out if they, they need US dollars or fiat. Uh, the other thing that we do then of course is a very sophisticated set of APIs and data pipeline infrastructure so that other consumer applications can easily integrate tokens and commerce into their websites, into their products without having to figure out you know, how to create their own ERC-20 tokens and, and, and deal with uh, you know, MetaMask signings and, and so forth. So, a layer of APIs and infrastructure that allow uh, today um, for a number of different um, applications to be developed on it. We talked a bit about Discord and Twitch, and so there's already a community of developers that have created Twitch, you know, overlays that plug right into OBS software. They've created Discord bots that allow um, communities to use creator coins inside of Discord uh, in a very simple way. So, you know, it's all about creating that ecosystem and, and, and some really cool technology that makes it really, really easy to get into crypto assets and use it, not just in a purely crypto sense, but inside of other consumer applications, while still maintaining the composability that an ERC-20 uh, you know, enables. If you want to live a bankless life, you need to get a hardware wallet. There is no alternative for storing your crypto in a self-sovereign fashion. That's why I have four ledgers that I use to manage my different crypto assets using the Ledger Live account as well. Ledger Live is like your home base for managing your Ethereum, DeFi, and crypto accounts. It does a really good job of aggregating all of your different Ethereum wallets if you are the type of person that uses more than one. 
but you can also add other cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Cosmos or whatever your preferred blockchain is. And then it will display an aggregate portfolio of all your accounts at the main page. One thing that Ledger is doing a really good job of is enabling all the money verbs that me and Ryan talk about with the Bankless Skill Cube enabled in the Ledger Live app. So right now in the Ledger Live app, you can buy, sell, lend, swap, and stake your crypto assets, which is doing a really good job of fulfilling all of the money verbs in the Bankless Skill Cube. Something that's new to Ledger Live is Ledger Swap, where you can swap assets one for another directly inside the Ledger Live application, ensuring trustlessness in your financial activity on Ethereum and on Bitcoin. If you want to learn more about what you can do with a Ledger, go to the blog post, The Power of Ledger Live on the Ledger website where they share some of the more advanced things that you can do with your ledger that you might not have known about. There's a link in the show notes that will take you to the ledger shop where you can get your preferred ledger hardware wallet. I personally like the Ledger Nano X, but I also have both. They're both great options. When you own a ledger, you own your own assets in the way that they have been designed to be held by the user and the user alone. So go get your ledger today to make sure that you are as self-sovereign as possible. The Bankless State of the Nations are brought to you by Wiren. Wiren is DeFi's first self-building community-run project, which I just get really, really excited about. Wiren is a system that seeks out yield in DeFi, and it does that in a number of different ways. Well, a very aggressive way is with the vaults, where you can deposit your preferred asset of choice, and different DeFi experts will come in and generate a strategy for what to do with your deposited token, right? And so it'll go find ways to get yield in that deposited token in DeFi. For those who want to just earn yield on their stable coins, the earn system is for you, where you can deposit your preferred stable coin and Wiren will go and figure out which money market on DeFi in DeFi is producing the best interest rate, whether it's DYDX, it's Compound or Aave. It, it looks around DeFi to see where the yield is coming from and it directs stable coins automatically so you don't have to. Check them out at yearn.finance to get started and also check out the stats page to see what other people are doing as well. Did I hear you say that uh, you guys are, are building out, or there's a developer ecosystem building out a plugin. So that goes into OBS that can trigger an event based off the state of a token. Exactly. So That's like, exactly right. say for example, that we're doing a live stream on the bankless nation and the bankless ecosystem. And we use OBS, I use OBS. Yeah. And so maybe well, there's like, maybe I, up with the rally token. Yeah. Maybe it makes <laughs> a rally token. And like we say that, like, if you send a token to this address, with this uh, piece of inf with information in the data field, we'll make the data field, that data field show up on OBS in the live stream on screen. That's, that's, exactly all, right. that's like something that we could do? That's exactly right. So you know, if you'd be able to, to do a live stream, for example, and people who want to support you know, the Bankless uh, you know, stream can mm -hmm. kind of do that. They can have their name pop up and say, hey, you know, Kurt is supporting David or, or the Bankless Nation with, you know, 10 bankless tokens and mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much for all the, the great you know knowledge you guys are creating etc and, and that can happen and that could be wow. an interactive experience that happens right on OBS. Wow that is really really cool okay so if uh, let's let's talk about how people get, would get their hands on the tokens right or I guess when that turns the the conversation to the community like where's the incentive for the uh, community to step into the world of the content producer other other than just like you know I'm a fan of, of uh, you know, a, a music mu musician or I'm a fan of some streamer and they have a token and I find out about that. Is there any other like additional incentives? Like how, do you, how are you corralling the, the consumer side of the equation? Well, you know, right now we are a little bit more focused on creators, but our, where we want to go with this is, you know, I'm a huge, you know, I've been making video games for 11 years before I started our, the Rally Project. And uh, what I really wanted, so I've been making games where people pay real money for virtual currency and virtual assets. And, you know, people have been asking me all along, you know, when I started that, when I started Kabam 15 years ago, why would somebody pay you real money to buy a digital sword, you know, for use in the game? Well, I was like, well, you know, it turns out it's a massive business that's $150 billion yeah, a year. Don't ask why. Right people are doing it anyways. <laughs> people are doing it. Yeah. People are doing it. And, and what, what was the genesis of the rally project was I wanted to take these very sophisticated tools that we were making, you know, uh, in games and gaming contexts and basically abstract it out of that game experience and give it to any content creator, really any person, anybody that wants to start um, and create their own token within a few, you know, and, and create their own token without having to 
to do any programming or code. So there's a, there's a couple of games uh, like Roblox, which is going public soon uh, in the United States um, that started this, you know, that company started about 15 years ago, where uh, it enables anybody to make their own game and do it without having to, to do a bunch of complex software development. Um, and so that's what Rally does. We, we basically help you create today a virtual a current a, a social token um, that's a real cryptographically secure token and anybody can do it and so i think for users over time uh if you just if you have like a twitter and you got 200 followers and you want to check out and create your own uh rally token for your small your, your community that's just getting started you can do that um, and if you're you know a, a massive celebrity with 100 million fans you know globally you can also, and you don't want to have a team of engineers build out a, a, you know, figure out your own crypto token. Great, you can use Rally to to get started and, and use your, you know, get started within a few minutes as well. That's that's really really cool. And I remember on our Jesse Walden podcast we had on, on Bankless, and Jesse runs the Variant Fund, and I know that Variant has has invested in the in the Rally project. The the whole thesis of that uh, podcast through line was like the the big me tent mentality of crypto is why crypto is going to win, right? And like what crypto is and what the DeFi summer is, what is and was and what all this mania is around tokens is it's excitement about uh, being able to have like have and coordinate larger communities, larger groups of people, right? Uh, and it seems to be that Rally is really spearheading that effort on the on the community engagement with content creation side of things. So that that's really, really exciting and really cool to see this project come out. Let's talk about where the state of the project is now. Like, where are you guys in development? So we, we think about getting to uh, V1 uh, pretty soon. So V1 is, uh, so the Rally project is a relatively you know, complex piece of technology. So we talked a little bit about uh, our yield delegating vaults, uh, you and I privately, but we use, uh, we integrate with um, the Yearn project and, and what their vaults do to basically hold the Rally community uh, treasury. And so we, we created something called yield delegating vaults because from a regulatory perspective, we never wanted to take people's money and in, in invest it into Rally directly, but we say, hey, if you're already using uh, your own finance and you want to delegate your future yield, you know, then you get um, some of the network emissions from in the Rally network. So there's a really interesting way that we create a community governed treasury uh, on chain and, uh, and that happens through the, the Yearn project. Uh, and then we have a well, liquidity mining rewards as any good DeFi project uh, would do. And so this is what uh, enables any creator that's creating a, a token that's bonded to the Rally token. Uh, it enables them full liquidity through Uniswap and Balancer. And we have about two and a half million dollars of, of liquidity across those two DEXs you know, today. Uh, and that's a really cool way to enable just uh, kind of mark, market price discovery as well as the ability to exchange uh, and bring new people into the community or, or let existing people exit out of the community if they need to. Uh, and then we have what's happening on what we call the Rally you know, side chain, which is an Ethereum you know, private chain at this point in time. But what it does is that it, it's computationally intensive to do some of the calculations that we do to create these uh, uh, creator coins and bond them to Rally tokens today. Uh, and so we do that on a side chain and then there's no transaction fees. So if you want to do, if you want to tip, like let's say the Bankless Nation, a dollar uh, worth of, of creator coins, you could do that without paying a dollar in gas fees, you know, on the Ethereum mainnet to, to do much smaller transactions that, you know, the average, uh, you know, person in America or really in the world, you know, like they're not doing DeFi well type of transactions that in, in affording, you know, 200 you know, way, you know, kind of gas prices, they can do, you know, much smaller transactions and have that be uh, very practical. And of course, we were very um, uh, excited about E2, but also all the L2s and some of the other mm -hmm. uh, kind of ETH bridges that are coming out there. And you guys do a great job covering uh, everything that's happening in that ecosystem. So, you know, the whole, the destiny of Rally is in the next 12 months, we'll, we'll roll up the side chain uh, probably through a couple of L2 uh, technologies um, to uh, on mainnet, and then you can take your creator coin and put it into a compound or, or other protocols and, and other things like that. But uh, today we do all of that on a side chain to enable mm -hmm. uh, much smaller transactions, no trans no gas fees, uh, and, uh, and, and, and do some of that. So Rally is a little bit trusted today, and there's a bridge that that kind of acts between the main net and the rally side chain, just like you know some of these E2, you know, or uh, um, layer two uh, bridges mm -hmm. do as well. 
And so it works very similarly. And so all of that combined together is the Rally Network. And that's, uh, that's all live today with the ex one exception of not being able to exit yet from the side chain. So that'll happen on December 8th. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'll say that while you can't exit onto you know, mainnet, we do have, you know, we partnered with a couple of other crypto projects mm -hmm. to enable like USDC exits and things like that. So you can, because there's full market price, you know, there's, a, there's an ability to exit through. Um, right, so somebody's of offering so, yeah. the, the on and off ramps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but there'll, be a, there'll be a trustless way to exit out of the side chain mm -hmm. on December 8th as well. Nice. There will and be that, that just makes like perfect sense too because like the, the layer two wars are still going on like and optimism has still plenty of, of releases to do and like you guys but you guys can't wait for things to like get you know polished and perfect and so like while you guys are in development and still kind of in in your early phase and, and not yet you know taking over the world the like the trustlessness of the doesn't really seem to matter to me at this point like uh it's it's not the right time to be like really hammering on like is this the most perfectly trustless uh infrastructure because like we, especially when we are working in like the world of uh, communities around content producers like how many market caps of dollars is really going to be transacted on a day-to-day -day basis like what's the real risk here plus what's the real reward of waiting for the right roll-up implementation right down the line yeah. that, that just makes perfect sense to me that's exactly right but and that that's our that's our feeling you know certainly by the time you know if we start getting into the nine nine figure you know mm -hmm. sort of U.S. dollar values, you know, I think mm -hmm. we'll, we'll be very, very focused right. on, on uh, establishing full trustlessness in the entire network. But today, I think some level of trust in the network, uh, right. with as much transparency about what's mm -hmm. going on is, is kind of the ethos that we're, we're shooting for. Um, right. And that's and then, of course, your, your guys is like, uh, um, Big, and when you fo when you wake up in the morning, like you guys are focused on getting content producers, like getting community people, getting infrastructure built, and like it's other people's job to worry about that. Yeah, and so like that's not even the problem yeah. that you guys are trying to solve. That's right, and that's why I think the, the coolest thing that I think we're doing is um, our, our community activity rewards. Yeah, let's talk about is, that. Yeah, which is you know the, the the creators themselves are basically the creators and communities are uh, doing the work of like a miner or an ETH. Ethereum validator, uh, and we don't need that because we're not trying to be a layer one blockchain. We're trying, we, we inherit the security of other layer ones, primarily Ethereum right now. Uh, and so we don't need to worry about consensus and we don't need to worry about that kind of stuff uh, and, and, and uh, rewarding people who are doing that valuable work for the network. We, you know, people will pay gas fees for that. The, what, what creators do and what the communities do on, on Rally is that as they're creating economic transactions on Rally, they're earning the Rally emissions as their, as their reward. And right now, the Rally network is, um, for the creators that are active on it, a creator doing about $1,000 of, of economic transactions in a month through the Rally network is actually earning about $2,500 um, you know, for those transactions, about 150% more than what they're actually getting in transactional volume. So you know, what, what's really cool is that creators um, who've been screwed in the past by a lot of middlemen, like RIC talked about how you know, artists get 12% of, uh, you know, of uh, uh, music uh, revenue. Yeah, did um, you saw that tweet recently? Yeah. Right? yeah. I, I mean, it's, uh, it's you know, creators, creator, whether you're, you know, you're on Facebook and you're creating content and you're doing 0% of that, or you're on some other you know, platform and you're mm -hmm. creating valuable content and experiences, uh, you know, crypto is a great way to say, hey, I'm going to take control of my own economic destiny, which is all about the bank bus nation, right? And I'm going to create a, you know, something that I actually own myself and I can port, I can bring with me to, you know, whether it's a Twitter or a Facebook, or a, you know, other platforms where I'm, you're creating valuable content for those other platforms, but I'm always going to own my own crypto uh, economic destiny and token and control that. And that's, I think, something really powerful for people who want to, uh, who think about running a digital business today, uh, whether you're a musician, whether you're, mm -hmm. you're a blogger, whether you're um, a podcaster or a YouTuber or a streamer, um, your crypto, I think it's going to be a really powerful way for all of these creators that, you know, have fans and audiences all over the world to, um, you know, create something new that they totally own themselves and will control. And in, in Rally's case right now, you can, you know, if you're making a thousand dollars in, in subscription revenue or donations or other support from your fans, you know, with the rally rewards that are going on right now, you're making about $2,500, you know, today. So it's a very powerful way to reward, you know, creators and others um, for uh, taking their digital 
uh, transactions and, and moving them into crypto. And for a lot of our creators, it's uh, you know this is this is turning into their primary you know, line of, of business, and it's uh, it's really rewarding to see. Cool, fantastic! I'm really really excited about Rally. Uh, I really want to see it come and, and do really good uh, good for the world. Uh, so, Kevin, thank you for coming on and introducing Rally to the nation. Thanks for having me. If people want to learn more about Rally, where should they go? Is there a Discord server? What's the website? Give us the uh, give us the deets. Yeah, rally.io is, is kind of where you can find out a bunch of information. Discord is probably where, uh, you know, it's, we have a pretty active Discord community. So that's always where the most interactions happens. We have a, a very active blog that we try to update once a day um, with all the different happenings that are going on. And then Discourse is uh, kind of where all the, the crypto uh, geeks, all we all hang out and kind of talk about changes and governance to the, to the economic uh, protocol of Rally. So these are all the places to find us. Cool. Yeah, that, awesome. rally, rally.io is a great way to connect to all of these other uh, places. Cool. Well, thank you for coming in and sharing all that information about it. Let's, let's uh, see what this world of content production incentivized by tokens can really do. Thank you, David. Cheers.